Hello, good evening everyone. So today, what we're going to discuss is one of the theories of human development. We have Vygotsky's social-cultural theory. So it will revolve on the quotation, what the child can do in cooperation today, tomorrow, he or she will be able to do alone. It has something to do with dealing with people. Our development, based from this theory, mainly comes if we cooperate with someone to accomplish a certain task. So we have the keywords here, social interaction. This is the key theme of Vygotsky's theory as it plays an important role in cognitive development. So it's related to Piaget's cognitive development. He believed that individual could not be understood without looking into the social and cultural context within which development happens. So here, we develop our cognitive aspect through social and cultural context. Social because we interact with people. And for cultural, we also consider the language, how we use it to communicate. Because language is one of the products of our own culture. Now, another keyword here, it's the main one, scaffolding. It is Vygotsky's term uh, for the appropriate assistance given by the teacher to assist the learner accomplish a task. A while ago, we said that we are greatly affected by the people that we interact with. It is so true with this process, scaffolding. So, what is scaffolding? Scaffolding is giving the right amount of assistance in bridging the gap between the learner's current skill levels and the desired skill level. As the learners become more proficient, they will be able to complete the task on their own, thus the removal of the assistance or guidance. This is called the scaffold and fade away technique. So once the learner already knows the desired level of performance, then the assistance or the guidance could already be removed and we call that scaffold and fade away technique. Now, because this is in relation with the cognitive development, so let's compare the cognitive development views of uh, two experts here, we have Piaget and Vygotsky. So, Piaget, for the first one, it's more individual in focus. So, the development depends on the learner. While in Vygotsky, social, social in focus, because the development is based from social interaction, as what we have said a while ago. Now, from Piaget, he believed that there are universal stages of cognitive development so he believes that there is a uniform progress from the learner at a certain age while Vygotsky did not propose stages but emphasized on cultural factors in cognitive development so he focused there in cultural factors that's why he is going to stress the role of language in cognitive development while Piaget did not give much emphasis on language so let's have the first one social interaction parents teachers and other adults in the learners environment all contribute to the process of learning so they are the immediate family the ones that we interact with directly so their functions is to explain Model assist, give directions, and provide feedback to learners. Social interaction comes hand in hand with cultural factors. Now, according to Vygotsky, culture has a crucial role because it plays an important part in the cognitive development of children. So, looking into the wider range of experience that the culture would give to a child. So, it's like the wider the culture is, the more that the student's going to learn. Okay. Example, how a child is raised or trained in early life can contribute to the development of the cognition of the child. So, if the young child is already... Uh, trained with a certain level of competency, then 
he's going to learn it better if he's already old. So, here we start at a young age. What does he say about the language again? In social interaction, we just not have the interaction with the others. We also talk to ourselves. So, children talk to themselves. We often hear preschool preschoolers talk to themselves as they play. Like, uh, if they are going to make an airplane out of paper, he's going to say, uh, this is my airplane. What am I going to do with this? I'm going to let it fly and with the note in it, I am hoping that it could reach the person I want to read this message. Just like that. So, for Vygotsky, this is talking to oneself. But uh, this one, it has an indication of the thinking that goes on the mind of the child. This leads to private speech, a form of self-talk that guides the child's thinking and action. So, it functions as a guide on what the child is going to do. So, it's like what she says he will do. For example, I'm going to eat. Then he's going to eat like that. Okay. Now, what are the learning activities which are applicable for children to develop better associated with the sociocultural context of this theory of development. So here, children learn best through hands-on activities than when listening passively. Of course, they learn through experience. And how is that? Because we have the so-called learning by doing. Learning by doing made fruitful when children interact with knowledgeable adults and peers. Okay, later on we're going to know uh, how do we call those knowledgeable adults and peers. Let's now ha have this one, the zones first. The zone of proxi proximal development. Okay, so in this proximal development, we have actually other things to consider. We have the zone of actual development. In this one, a child is performing an activity alone. Okay, that attains a certain level of competency. So, for example, in the playing of the guitar, your zone of actual development is that you just know how to hold the guitar, but not the strumming of the guitar. That's your zone of actual development. And your desired level of performance, of course, is to play the guitar very well. However, having a more knowledgeable other MKO, as in a competent adult or an advanced peer, the child can perform on a higher level of competency. So, in short, MKO is the one who could help you gain your desired competency. Now, the difference between what the child can accomplish alone and what she can accomplish with the guidance of another is called zone of proximal development. This zone represents a learning opportunity where a knowledgeable adult can assist the child's development. So it is like the learnings you had alone until the time that you will learn more with the help of MKO. That's zone of proximal development. And you can see the illustration from our book. That's it about Vygotsky's social cultural theory. It is saying that overall, we humans develop because of the social and cultural co context that we are exposed to. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe.